Dan, anyone who watches this show knows how high you generally have been on Carson Wentz. That's back-to-back -back tough weeks for him. <laughs> yeah. What's, what is the problem? Give me the one specific problem you see. Forcing the football. And Greeny, okay, so as a quarterback, you really throw interceptions for three reasons. One, you get fooled by what you're seeing. You credit the defense. They, they confuse you. You get fooled. Two, you panic under pressure. Ball's got to come out of your hands before you're ready for it to. Or three, you force things. You're trying to make things happen so hard. And that's what we're seeing with Carson Wentz right now. That's why these interceptions four in the first two games have happened. He's forcing the football. It's either him throwing interceptions or the ball is going high. And when you force things, when you press so hard, if you watch the front leg of his, his left leg is always straight. And that's why that ball is going to go high. And that's totally a sign of you're trying to force things. And so um, I would say this. The Eagles don't have a quarterback problem, but their quarterback's play is problematic. And it needs to get fixed very quickly, both by him and that coaching staff. And that's not their only problem, is it, Rex? No, it's not. Um, where's their defense? Greeny, yeah. where the heck is the Philadelphia Eagle defense? And one other thing I want to add about the quarterback, if I may. Okay, because I totally agree with you, Dan, on this, because it's all of the above what you had mentioned. But does anybody think it's a concern when, he, when Carson Wentz in the press conference after game number two is bringing up game number one. That means he's not over it. Mm -hmm. It's still in his head. And I think the lack of confidence right now is showing in his play. Very quickly, Ryan Clark, obviously Cowboys a miracle win yesterday. That doesn't feel like a division that anyone is going to run away and hide. What are you seeing from the Eagles? Listen, when you look at the Eagles, they just aren't there. And Carson Wentz's play may be problematic, but I believe that he is the problem. When you look at that game yesterday, they're down five with a good drive going in the third quarter with an opportunity to go up. And that's when he throws that interception to Darius Williams. You go to week one, you're up 17-0 under two minutes in the first quarter. You throw an interception there. Then you throw another one coming out of the third quarter. And so these aren't just mistakes. We can look at it in a vacuum. Footballs are, football is about situations. He's making bad situational decisions, and that's not a good thing for any quarterback, whether he's problematic or the problem. And on the other side of the ball, let's give Sean McVay a little bit of love. He kind of got it going again. If you look at some of the things that he was drawing up, some of the misdirections, making sure he moved Jared Goff out of the pocket. This is even after losing Cam Akers early in the game. He had the Philadelphia Eagles confused. They didn't understand or know where the ball was going play to play, and you saw that defensively. This is a team that was supposed to have improved on the back end by acquiring Darius Slate, getting Roby Coleman, and they didn't look good at all. So you look at this team through two weeks, they are – much like they were last year, except that you don't expect the superstar finish from Carson Wentz if he can't fix some of these things. This division is bad again, but the Eagles are even worse, and that's not a good sign for Doug Peterson or the Philadelphia Eagles as a team. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.